Hi, this is Diana, your favorite Duster Nerd. I want to be sure that all of you are aware that there are new upgrades and Dwarf Lab released some recommendations to photograph the eclipse. You still have to know your telescope and you need to be ready right before the uh, totality because... <laughs> It only lasts a few minutes. For some of us, it's going to be maybe around three, four minutes. I don't know, depending on the location. Uh, it may be a few seconds less. You want to be sure that you capture it really good. If you're using Android or iPhone, you need to check for the upgrade. And there is a new upgrade that was released about a week ago or so. So you want to be sure that you have that. Be sure so you don't have any problems, okay? Okay, so go to Dwarf Lab uh, page and that uh, or the app can take you directly to do it. And you just have to switch uh, to internet once you start the app. But this is something you want to do before <laughs> and test it before the eclipse. So there's one for Android, one for iOS, Apple Store or the uh, Play Store or just directly from the app can take you and do the upgrade. Okay, so be sure before we start, right, uh, even getting excited about taking pictures that we are going to set up and level the unit. <laughs> and of course, we are going to put the ND filters on, power on, and to connect to your phone. Now, this is, uh, these steps here, two and three, are going to be once you are going to point the telescope to the sun so unless you're not pointing the telescope to the sun it doesn't need the nd filters but once you are pointing and you say okay here's the sun it's up there then that's the moment that you are going to put the nd filters Okay, so as I mentioned before, it's very important to try to level the uh, telescope the best you can. And it all depends on the uh, surface where you have the telescope. Uh, if it's grass, if it's uh, gravel, pavement, you know, the ground is not completely level. So just be sure that you play a little bit here. Uh, with this and try to level it the best you can you see like right now I see that it's not and we're just kind of like going to put it like that so level your telescope the best you can put it in a safe and steady place and then once you are starting your imaging session or photograph don't be running all over <laughs> as the vibrations are going to affect too Okay, so once we have our telescope balanced and in place and the filters are on and everything, pretty much all you need to do is uh, just go here on photo and this is where you want to manually move your telescope and find the sun and you are going to put the sun right here on that square, the green square, try to center it. Once you have your telescope completely centered there on that little square and go into functions and immediately you're going to see sun track and that's where you want to click on that and then it's going to be tracking the sun and from this moment on you don't want to be moving the telescope anymore very important so this is your chance to once you have the filter on and everything let's just go ahead try the out of focus first if it doesn't work try the min plus or minus have your image and focus the best you can and also uh, if it's over or underexposed you're going to see it right away to set the exposure time is the most critical uh, step during the eclipse because you can get it right you can get it completely overexposed or you can get it completely underexposed uh, based on my experience to have it a little bit underexposed is much better than overexposed let's just go ahead and look at some examples right at the beginning most likely you'll get it 
overexposed like this image. And this is more or less what you're looking for is more of those orange tones. And this is the time where you have to be quick and start working with the exposure time and trying to find the color that it's more into the orange tones. And this is why it's so important to practice and learn the telescope before the day of the eclipse. For the shutter speed, as everybody's going to have it differently. But let's take a look at some good starting points. And remember, we don't have too much time, so I recommend to do 1 over 150 to 1 over 600 and look for those orange tones so you don't overexpose the sun. So we are ready to start photographing. Well, for the sun, all we need to do is just go here into photo on the icon and you can do a video which it's what I did when I uh, captured the annular solar eclipse last year. Now, if you want to record the videos, be sure that the uh, memory card is empty as the videos is going to take a lot of memory. Um, and it is estimated that um, if you're recording for a couple of hours, it's going to be around 50 gigabytes of memory so be sure to get a bigger memory card uh, 128 gigabytes should be uh, fine and it will support up to 512 gigabytes for the video okay so now that we are getting ready for the uh, totality this is where you really need to uh, be aware of the settings and you need to plan ahead on this and that it's going to be the step C2 and C3 <laughs> where it's where you're going to remove the uh, filter and you are going to adjust the exposure settings. Remember, you have to go back to that exposure settings uh, under functions so you can capture the totality and the ring around the sun. Then you're going to set the exposure settings to 1 over 1000 for shooting the diamond ring and Bailey speeds. So these steps right here are very important. This is what you need to practice a few days before. Practice as much as you can. Take those uh, filters on and off and adjust real quick the settings on the uh, shutter speed or exposure time. And right after totality, you have to be watching again. And as soon as you start seeing uh, the edges of the sun that are getting brighter, it's time to put the filters on. And now it's time to go back to the original shutter speed, the one that it was between 1 over 150 or 1 over 600. Well, thank you so much for watching and I am going to be recording with my dwarf telescope and three other cameras, three other setups. So hopefully this is going to be a spectacular day that nature and the universe is going to give us this gift uh, because the next one is going to be in around 20 years. I hope that you capture the eclipse and I'm going to make another video uh, during the eclipse and of course after and hopefully we can all capture it I have different plans if it's cloudy and if it's completely cloudy then there's nothing we can do uh, but it's if it's partially cloudy I'm still going to photograph as I have done it before thank you for watching and I'll see you in a few days